The microbrand industry is a little like an Oprah event at the moment. You get a GMT, and you get a GMT, and we all get GMTs. And you know what? I love it. GMTs are incredibly useful if you're like me and have friends and family in a lot of different time zones. Even if you do for some reason always want to know what the time is in Antarctica, you'll have a nice and easy visual prompt just for fun. Travis at RCD, no stranger to creating lovely watches, is releasing possibly one of the most attractive of the new to market GMTs to date. Certainly in my opinion, his best looking watch to date. I have the black RCD Ascentus GMT on loan today, but FYI, there are many other colors available and I'll link up the website in the description. If you haven't met Travis yet, then check out my interview with him and hear more about how he started the brand and what a normal day looks like for RCD. Once again, we have a hex-coated titanium case, which means a coating of up to 1200 Vickers and also a brand new bracelet. And once again, this means a very light watch, almost like you're wearing nothing at all. The whole package is so light that it feels almost plastic toy-like, but that's the thing with titanium. It's light and strong, and either you like it or you don't. Is this the perfect GMT watch then, and should you purchase one right now? Without spoiling my review, it's very, very good, but I do have one small concern that may or may not be a deal breaker. Let's get stuck into the Ascentus. As I stated straight up, it's a very attractive watch, with its clear white on black design language throughout and that cool orange GMT hand. Before I get into the macro shots, please allow me to talk about my new sponsor, Watch Crunch. If you're like me and always looking for a better alternative to interact with other watch fans, I'm very comfortable in recommending Watch Crunch. You'll find me there amongst other YouTubers, microbrand owners, podcasters, and importantly, watch fans. You'll see watches at all price points, no snobs here, and even people chatting about straps. Yep, these are my people. The overall vibe is welcoming and the user interface is modern, attractive, and importantly, no annoying algorithms or ads. But don't take my word for it. Head on over and check it out which is what I did when they offered to sponsor my channel. Make your own mind up, and when you're ready, follow me on Watch Crunch. So let's get stuck into the dial. The texture is a little stone-like once again. We've seen this before from the brand, and it absorbs the light well in this black. The stick indices are all applied, and 12, 3, 6, and 9 have two different types of loom, which I'll come back to. The logo is printed, as is the text detail on the 20ATM pressure rating and the GMT movement within. The quality of the print is excellent and even very very close, it's even and crisp. What I should point out immediately is that this is an early prototype with no date window. That will not be an option on the finished release models, which will all have a date complication. And with a bit of imagination in squinting you can just see it right now. It's a little bit of a shame, I think, since this no date dial looks really good. But it makes sense to have a date on the GMT dial, so it is understandable. The sword hands are nice and clean in typical RCD fashion, and this GMT hand is not only orange, but quite large and very easy to see also. Obviously, this takes a full 24 hours to rotate and is set independently from the rest of the hands. directional vessel will allow you to track even a third time zone if you please. And whilst that's a good thing, it's customary for these vessels to be bi-directional. So this is a little unusual, and perhaps a hangover from the diver vessels of the other models. The feel is quite solid with no backplay, but perhaps a little tinny if I had to nitpick. 
So let's cover size and wear now before I go into the case. It's 40 millimeters across with the crown adding another two millimeters. Lug width is 20 millimeters and this bracelet tapers all the way down to 16 millimeters. It's 13 millimeters thick and lug to lug is 46.6 millimeters. I'm undecided on the wear on my 19 centimeter wrist. I've had some time with the watch and it feels a tad too small for me, which is a ridiculous thing to say, but I've come to the conclusion that it only feels like this when I've come off many of my other favorite watches to wear. The typical angles of an RZE watch is there and I've always really liked how they do things. Both sides have the almost stealth fighter lines that hides the case thickness, protects the crown and generally looks really good, particularly when in this almost military grey titanium colour. The dual lugs helps with changing straps and the bracelet easily, which you might want to do. The crown is signed and so easy to grip with its broad knurling. It couldn't be any better and this is a tried and tested RCD crown and guard designs. For me personally, and I think this will apply to only very few of you, I think the taper of the bracelet is too much and it loses proportion a little overall. Particularly since it's so light and offers almost no counterweight to the case at all. But if you have a smaller wrist, this will work absolutely perfectly. Particularly since the bracelet absolutely is designed to continue that angle straight down which is possibly also why it can look a tiny bit strange when that does not happen as it moves around on the wrist. Now honestly, this is a minority opinion, so please take it with a grain of salt. 99% of you will love the overall look. I would have preferred the lugs to be just a tiny little bit longer, but that's just me. The bracelet is an interesting look. It's very gray, dull titanium, and you need to be into that. There are plenty of spaces in between the links to ensure your arm hair stay put. Screwing links means that they are easy to adjust yourself despite being so very small. You do get a screwdriver supplied which certainly helped me since none of mine was small enough. A secured double pusher buckle that's signed with the R logo and with no less than 6 micro adjusts means that you should get a good fit here. All angles are soft to touch and the hex coating hopefully means that this is a bracelet that will stay looking pristine for a long time to come. The screw in back hides the new as of mid-2022 Seiko NH34 movement. It offers the usual hacking and hand winding features and 40 hours or so of power reserve. Accuracy is rated as a normal minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day but as we all know, Seiko are normally quite conservative here, so you should be able to expect better accuracy than that. The RCD Loom is always good, and no exception today. So do I think RCD have another hit on their hands? Yep, you better get in quickly here, since this is a brilliant GMT watch at a very competitive price of US dollars 549. This new bracelet appears to have been well thought out and there are no quality issues that I can see at least, even on this prototype. And ultimately, if you think it tapers too much like I do, then you can easily change it to something else. Any black strap will look awesome here and that could also add some weight if that bothers you. RCD keeps pumping out one brilliant and exciting model after the next, and if you're already a fan of the brand, you'll buy this one also. If you're new to the brand, this or really any of the models is a good move. Out of all the new Seiko Movement GMT based microbrand models, this is my favorite one so far, with some fun color options and the design that would suit small wrists and it definitely wears far smaller than your average 40mm watch thanks to that lug design. An RCD watch is a safe buy. You get a quality watch at an excellent price. And should you not like it, this is one of the few micro brands that holds their value pretty well. So there's no need to hold back. Go forth and buy your Ascentus GMT right now. 
thanks again for being here and supporting my channel and I'll see you next time.